Hey, my tech friends, thanks for stopping by. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's continue to grow this channel. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Hey, guys. It's March 26th. Figured I would make some additional videos today, provide you guys with some additional steps and details. So we're going to start this video out today with understanding defragmentation in a Windows-based system. So people who have been subscribers for the past month or so know that I had touch base on uh, Windows XP and using Disk Keeper 2007. Now, unfortunately, while I found 2007, I, I don't really trust the link to download the 2007 application. I did download it, but the, the installer package isn't the right size, so I don't think that's the right way for us to go. But what I did find was Disk Keeper 2006, which while it doesn't contain all of the features 2007 has, it should have enough of them for us to at least create a proof of concept or a point of view for a defragmentation. So why don't we defrag Windows 10 anymore? The thing is, is that Windows 10, while we are now on solid state drives, that, that's really the kicker is the solid state drive. So solid state drives still get fragmented, just like spinning disks got fragmented. There's no difference in the fragmentation based off of the disk media type. The reason why we don't defrag is because in the spinning disk, as fragmentation grew, you lost performance in the spinning disk. Whereas with the solid state drive, as fragmentation grows, theoretically, you don't lose performance in the disk. The reason why is because in a spinning disk, depending on where the fragmentation lays, depends on how fast the actual I.O. will be. Whereas in a solid state drive, fragmentation can be all over the place, but it doesn't really matter, right? Because you're accessing the disk, the same speed from the internal to the external portions of the disk is going to be the same speed, read and write. However, in Windows XP, Windows 2000, those systems, they had additional functions built into the defragmentation tool, specifically the arguments of dash B and dash W. The dash B argument is actually the bootloader. So what it does is when you do a defrag dash B, it would push the bootloader to the fastest portions of the disk and allow the bootloader to run faster, which would give you a faster boot response time. That's why the defragmentation tools built into the Windows 2000 and XP platforms were important. Now that we've gone to solid state disks, pushing the data to a specific part of the solid state drive obviously doesn't matter because the speed on the read write is about the same. However, the defragmentation tool not only pushed the data to the outside of the disk, it organized the data so that way the, the read on the system boot could be at the fastest point in the disk. It would put all the data uh, close in location to where it was so that way it could be read at the fastest part of the disk for the bootloader. So on a spinning disk, defrag space hyphen B um, will give you the ability to create the bootloader on the fastest portion of the disk and then defrag the bootloader so that way it boots the system faster. Now the dash W option is actually an organizational configuration which allows you to organize the data on the disk. So it says that if you are constantly opening an application like, say, Google Chrome or uh, the MyPal application, you want those applications to be at the fastest part of the disk after the bootloader. So the dash, dash W would give you the option to do that, where it would organize the data in a particular location after the bootloader to speed up the boot read and then the application launch process on a spinning disk. Again, these are things that don't really matter in a solid state drive. But the question is, is do you think that fragmentation occurs if you don't have a spinning disk? So the reason why I bring up this question is because I've noticed in the comments, I've had a, a variety of comments indicating, well, you mentioned putting your uh, page file as a single file versus allowing it to grow and shrink because of fragmentation, but fragmentation doesn't occur on solid state drives. And I'm here to tell you that that's not true. It's just simply not true. Fragmentation will still occur on solid state drives, but as to whether or not it has a performance impact is a different story. So let's take a look at the fragmentation on this virtual 
Windows XP machine that is running on VMware Player. This is writing to a file, and that file is sitting on an NVMe drive. So based off of the theories that I've seen in the comments section, there should be zero fragmentation. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so I had mentioned that we have Disk Keeper on this thing. So we're gonna go to Start, Programs, Disk Keeper Corporation, and click on Disk Keeper. And the first thing we're gonna do on this system is we're gonna analyze the disk. And there you go, right off the bat, we can see there's an enormous amount of fragmentation in this disk. Even though this is on a solid state drive. And the reason why is because the drive media makes no difference. It's about how the Windows operating system writes the data and where the data is written. Now, the question is, is on an I.O. configuration, will defragging this data actually increase the performance? Or will we see any difference at all because of the configuration? In other words, will speeding up the performance give us faster boot time? Will applications launch faster if we defragment this solid state drive? Or will the performance remain the same? Now, again, keep in mind that in Windows 10, you don't want to defrag the drive because the way the operating system is written on Windows 10 for solid state disks is that it doesn't care where the data is because it's all reading it regardless at the same speed. But on Windows XP, because we had the additional tools of the bootloader fragmentation, defragmentation, or the uh, system um, organization of files for the sake of I.O., would it be faster if we defragmented it? My guess is, is that it won't make any difference, that it'll be just as fast one way or the other, that the only difference is, is you'll decrease the longevity of your solid state drive by running the defragmentation tool. But we could check that. We could look into that to see if that actually does make a difference one way or another. We would have to set up some kind of way to, to time our boot time. Um, and then also we would have to put some applications on this XP machine in order for us to test how long it takes for those applications to open and then make the changes and run those tests again. We'll defrag the system, we'll fix the bootloader, we'll fix the, uh, the, the, the dash W option so we could organize the, the data for the, uh, the startup. Um, and then we could uh, defrag the actual file system and check to see if we gain any performance. And after we do that, let's also take a look at the configuration on the system uh, primarily about how uh, the, the MFT file in this thing works. Let's take a look at how we could uh, configure our MFT settings in this particular system so that way we can increase the size of the master file table. Now, the reason why you would wanna do that inside of Windows XP is because by default, Windows XP gives you a finite amount of space for your registry and your system variables. And what happens is, is over time, the more applications you install on the system, that space does not grow. And as a result, it forces the system to use compression. Now, compression causes fragmentation, but you can't defrag the MFT file through a, just a normal Windows process. You also can't expand the MFT file like you could in Windows 2000. Windows 2000 gave you the option to increase the MFT file directly from the Windows 2000 operating system. XP took that option away, even though it existed still with the variable to allow you to expand it. So now that we don't have this finite amount of space any longer, where we're in a situation where we have a 12 or 15 gig hard drive, and you don't want to make the MFT file you know, 8 gigs because there's half your drive, um, we can now expand that location. We can make that 8 gigs, so that way we remove the ability or the need for compression. And if you don't run compression in the MFT file, your system is a lot faster. Keep in mind that compression slows things down because you have to decompress it before you read it and then compress it again before it moves to the next portion of that MFT file. So we're going to want to change that. And we could do that too. But let's do this as a transitional step. Let's put a bunch of stuff on side of this Windows XP machine real quick. We'll install application, maybe Microsoft Office, a variety of different applications on this machine. And then let's, uh, let's fix the boot sector. And then we'll reboot it and see if it's faster on system boot. I'll set up some kind of a timer so we could do this uh, without any of the changes after we get all the applications on here. And then we'll set up a timer and we'll run it again um, after we change the uh, the bootloader configuration and then we'll do it again with the dash w option and then we'll do it again after the defrag 
and then we could do it again after we expand the MFT file to see if it makes any difference on a solid state hard drive in today's hardware configuration for a Windows XP machine when you have fragmentation. Stick around. Okay guys, so at this point I have installed uh, Corel uh, WordPerfect 2000. I installed Microsoft Office XP. Uh, I set Corel to require it to launch on system uh, boot, which is something I would never typically do, but for the sake of this test, we'll do it that way. Uh, I also installed Encarta on it. Um, I installed uh, Sonic Record Now XP Edition. Uh, basically installed a variety of different applications here, which if we go to uh, our all programs, we could actually see all the programs listed here now on the system. That obviously if you blip back to where we launched the Disk Keeper, you would see these things didn't exist. So now that we have some applications on here and we have some weight, let's take a look at the actual size of the drive. Um, so we're using nine gigs of the 40 gigs of hard drive, which I would imagine is probably pretty typical for an XP machine to be 20 to 40, 20 to 50 gigs in size. So um, generally speaking, that should be what it is. Uh, we don't have compression set, save disk space. We do have indexing turned on, which will slow things down on purpose. Um, so we should be good at this point to run a test, right? So let's test this and see how long it takes on a uh, system reboot before we do anything as far as a configuration is concerned. Now, something to keep in mind is that it does take me a couple seconds to at least type my password in to get into the system. So may have to remove that from the uh, amount of time. In other words, subtract it from the amount of time that it took to actually boot the system. Um, and I'm going by boot as far as when the arrow key here, the hourglass disappears. If the hourglass is still there, in my opinion, it's still not booted. We're still loading uh, applications in the background. So let's kick this off. Now, I, I realize this isn't going to be a one-to-one. -one. I don't have a script written that I can both control my Linux systems stopwatch plus the actual um, shutdown process on this machine at the same time. If there's something out there that you guys are aware of on the Linux platform that allow me to do both those things, please let me know what that is and I'll install it on my machine and then we can rerun this test as far as the timestamp is concerned. So this is just going to be a loose understanding as to what the timestamp is. Now, if we see the difference of one to two seconds, once we bring the system back up after we do our defrag, then we could say, well, it made no difference. But if we see like a 15 second difference, then we know that it made a pretty substantial difference. Um, also, keep in mind that while this machine is uh, is setting has settings that are set relatively low, I don't really have the option to control the speed of a single core of the processor on this particular configuration. So we don't have our typical four gigs on this machine. I've lowered it to five twelve megs. Um, I've set our page file to uh, one gig in actual uh, size utilization for the minimum configuration as well as the maximum configuration. Um, I also, also, I'm only running one core. So for the sake of this test, I'm trying to make it as close to what we would get in a typical Windows XP environment at the time, which is about 512 megs of RAM. Um, now, obviously four gigs of memory is gonna make a difference as far as uh, you know the, the speed things and applications load. Also multi-core processors make a huge difference. In the Pentium 4 days, we did have hyper-threading. Um, you know, hyper-threading was kind of a virtual dual-core configuration. Um, so it, it did mimic the dual-core, but it wasn't really a full true dual-core configuration like we have today. So keep in mind that while um, we could say, well, technically we, we could say with hyper-threading, we could run two cores on this machine and mimic the original configuration of the Pentium 4. It's really not necessary for this test. So for the sake of this test, what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch this reboot thing, which is going to give me a five second countdown timer before the system will actually reboot. And I'm going to try to get as close as possible to hit the start button before the actual system reboots. Now, you guys have the ability to watch this. So you know, if I'm like a second off, you could trim that second out of the amount of time on the system boot. And I'll do the same thing. I'll try to do the same thing after I log in is to launch this thing back in the on the on the front here. So you could actually see it as we log in or launch the actual applications as the system boots. So this isn't going to be a one-to-one, -one, but we'll do our best to try to get as close as possible to see if we can speed this up. All right, thanks, guys. Uh, stick around. Let's get this rolling.
So probably roughly right around the 35 second mark or about 34 and a half seconds is what it takes to traditionally boot a Windows XP machine with these applications installed on it. So let's now run a defragmentation on the bootloader and then we'll reboot the system again and see if we could beat, we'll say 34 and a half seconds. Okay, so because we don't have a baseline configuration option or argument that exists in Disk Keeper 2006, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do the analyze from the actual command line, and then we'll do the dash B for the bootloader through the command line, and then do another analyze through the command lines, and we'll see if we uh, get any changes whatsoever in our bootloader configuration through command line defragmentation. CMD, we'll do uh, frag C colon dash A for analyze. So it tells us our analyzation report it says 25% file fragmentation, 12% fragmented. It says we should defrag this volume. Now keep in mind, again, this is on a solid state hard drive, but XP doesn't really know what solid state is. So uh, that that's a thing. Um, so let's do a dash B for the baseline. Um, all right, now let's do another dash A and see if we made any changes whatsoever, and we did not. Um, so at this point, the baseline configuration thinks that it's moved the data to the outward portion of the disk to get you the fastest I.O. So now it's, uh, let's reboot the system again and run another test to see if it made any difference at all. I suspect it won't make any difference at all, but we'll see what happens. Um, so let's uh, get that timer set again, and we'll reboot the system again, and we'll see if there's any changes in the, uh, the speed of the reboot. So according to this, we actually lost time, but that could be my fault for being a little delayed inside of our uh, our typing. So we're, I'm going to guess we're probably right around the same amount of time, right around that same uh, 34 to 36 second mark. So let's uh, now stop the clock here and we'll pick this up from the uh, disk keeper. Let's defrag the actual drive. Let's do the file configuration, the dash W inside of the disk keeper, which will allow us to con uh, combine all our, our faster files um, to try to increase the speed to see if there's any difference in the boot time. Okay, so the first thing I want to point out is I did increase the memory and the processor configuration for the defragmentation portion of this because I don't want to sit here all day and wait for this thing to do whatever for the sake of time and because I have the resources to throw at this thing. I increased it back to four gigs of memory and two cores so that way I could run this defragmentation process. So if you notice that it's faster on this machine than it would be on your tr typical 512 meg, uh, you know, uh, one core processor, that's probably the reason why. And I will shift it back before we do our test again on our boot configuration just to see if we've made any change at all, like if it's, if it's increased our performance at all. But before I do that, obviously, I, I don't I don't want to spend all day here sitting here waiting for this thing to finish. So we're going to go start programs and then we're going to specifically go to the Disk Keeper Corporation configuration here. And uh, we're going to go back to uh, analyze this drive. And we're going to see all the fragmentation. Now, I believe if we compare this to our previous screen, we likely are going to see a difference here. And the reason why is because we did um, install applications. And we also ran our baseline configuration through our uh, command line for our defrag. So let's, uh, let's defrag this thing. And then once we have the defragmentation completed, let's jump back in here with 512 megs of memory and one core and see if we've increased our performance on our boot. So to defrag it, it's real simple. So once you run the analyze, you just right click on this thing and you just do defrag and it'll defrag the drive. Now, 
I'll put the uh, link for this application where I got the software. This is just a trial key. That's all you really need to do this, um, at least to do the defrag and the MFT file configuration. After that's done, I would use another application called ONO defrag, and I'll put together something uh, to, at the tail end of this video on the ONO defrag application and uh, send you, get you guys the link for that as well. So that way, if you're running XP, you can use the ONO defrag to uh, clean up the actual disk, if this actually provides any benefit whatsoever. Okay, so that's completed at this point. We could see that we have no more red, so no more fragmented files. We could see the green system files. Uh, we can see the reserve space, which is the little spaces in between here. Um, or the white unused space, which is little spaces in between there as well. Um, then we see the paging file, which is right here. That's the page file. Now the page file is a single file. Um, and if we look up here, we have, uh, you know, light blue, which is defragmented folders, and then blue, which is defragmented files. And if we go to file performance, then we can see that there are still low performing system files. That's typically handled by that dash W option that's in the command line. Um, and then we could see that we have the blue, which is the high performing files and folders. I'm going to run it just the way it is right now. Um, before we do so, we could see that we've had uh, the MFT file was currently 99% size, which indicates that the MFT file will become fragmented. See, that's a typical Windows XP issue. Um, and actually, to be honest, that issue also exists in Windows 10 and Windows 7 and is the main reason why those operating systems get so slow over time is because of that MFT configuration. So let's see if we could uh, reboot this thing and see if it makes any difference in our speed. And once we get the system back up uh, after we run a test, we will uh, launch this open again and we will take care of that MFT file and see if then it makes any difference at all. Okay, guys, so before I go through the process of rebooting this thing and running the timer again. I just figured I'd show you real quick. We're back down to our 512 megs of RAM, single core. Um, if we go back into task manager here and go into performance, you can see that we're running a single core 512 megs. So, I mean, it, it is what it is. I, I can't do much about the fact that this is a 10th gen. It's just how, what I run. So um, if you guys know of a way to change that or uh, just to throttle the processor, let me know in the comments. This is just, it's just running Linux and uh, VMware player to, to run these. Um, so at any rate, let's, uh, let's kick this off and see if we've made any difference in our boot process. Okay, I would call that a win or successful. So even on a solid state hard drive, it appears that in our configuration, if you defrag that solid state hard drive on Windows XP, you still gain performance. Um, I, I mean, I, I realized that I was faster on our log on that time, but I don't think I was 10 seconds faster on our log on that time than the previous time. So now let's change the MFT file. Let's, let's expand that to get rid of the defragmentation and also allow it to have enough space that there's not a need for uh, compression. And then let's run this again and see if we could trim this time down even further. Okay guys, so I, as before, rebooted the system and went back in and added myself the four gigs and the dual core just like I had stated before. So now we got our performance back, I guess, on our Windows XP machine by adding more resources to it. Let's uh, fix that MFT file. So what we'll do is we'll go to Start, Programs, Disk Keeper. Then we're going to go down here to Configure Disk Keeper and then Disk Keeper Configuration Properties. And then you're going to see something that says Frag Shield or Paging File MFT. Grab that, hit Edit. And we're going to scroll down. And we're going to see that your paging file resides on your C drive. And right now the minimum and the maximum size is 1 gig for a page file, which is fine because that's what we had set for our 512 megs of memory. 
Um, and then we're going to come down here and we're going to see that the disk capacity, we're going to see the free space available. We're going to see the current size of the MFT file is 23 megs and the percent used is 99%. So that's about what you're going to get is the size of your MFT file. It can expand, but not at the rate that it's necessary to expand to actually fix the latency caused by that file. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is actually change the configuration and you wanna configure the file for the following numbers, right? So allow minimum of 23,000 and a maximum of 10 million, uh, uh, 482,404. And now these are files, not total size, right? So right now we know that our current record size is 116,000. So if we wanted to double this, we would just double that 116,000. If we wanna make it say like 512,000 that'll give us more space to grow and keep in mind that you know 116,000 is 114 megs right now we have 34 gigs of roughly space available that we could we could expand this to so setting this thing to say like 512,000 is not going to break anything as far as the configuration so that's what we're going to do here we're going to do 512 1 2 3 so that's 512,000 and we're going to hit submit then we're going to see we're going to extend the MFT file to 512,000 records. And then once we finish this, we're going to have to do a reboot and we're going to do a boot time defragmentation on the system first to defrag that MFT file before we continue on. So we're going to proceed and it's going to pad the MFT file. It's going to run through the process. And once this finishes and reboots itself and does its uh, boot time defragmentation, um, I will actually kick off the video while it is in the reboot process. So that way you don't have to sit here and watch this whole thing. This is gonna take probably quite a bit of time for this to finish. Usually these configurations on the MFT files, even with four gigs of memory and the hottest hardware in the Windows XP days would take the better part of one to two hours to finish. So just be prepared if you're running this on physical hardware. Okay, so that didn't take as long on this machine, but again, we're talking about, you know, probably 10 years of speed performance increases in hardware. So it indicates that the system needs a reboot for this uh, items to take effect. So let's just hit okay. Let's reboot it and let the thing reboot and run its uh, boot time defragmentation. So unfortunately, because this is on a VM, I don't know if you guys could see it on the screen. It's very faint. It's because of the uh, video drivers that are installed on Windows XP. So this thing's running defrag in the background, but we can't really see it. So for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna pause it here and I will kick it back off once we get back into the Windows operating system. Okay, so now we have our MFT padded. And what does that mean? That means we're not gonna use compression and we're not running low on space and we're not gonna have fragmentation in the MFT since we've expanded it. So now at this point, what I would tell you if you were a typical Windows XP user is to uninstall the disk keeper. It's not necessarily to, to have it on there any longer. It's not gonna do anything for you at this point, right? So we've already defragged the drive. We've uh, fixed the MFT file. There's absolutely no reason to keep it on there. Now, going forward, in order to maintain the system, what I would tell you to install is something called ONO defrag, which was an application that was basically a clone of the Windows 2000 or Windows NT defrag tool that used to be built into the Windows system itself. So that's what I'd tell you to install to continue on to maintain the system. However, before we get to that part, let's uh, drop the memory utilization and the processor count on the system back down. And then let's run our reboot test again to see if we've gained any performance. Okay guys, so now that we rebooted the system, we have our MFT file padded. We uh, we ran our defrag on the system. Let's take a look real quick to make sure our padding actually worked. We'll go into Disk Keeper. Again, it's not necessary to go into this thing to actually run these jobs uh, after after you've done it already. Um, you know, Windows will frag on boot. That's just how Windows is because of the page file. So just be prepared that that's going to happen. Um, 
So let's look at the Disk Keeper configuration itself. We'll go to the frag page. Uh, we'll go back to edit. You can still see we still have one gig for our total page file. If we come down here, we can see percentage use is 4%. So that tells us right away that we, we did pad that enough that we don't have any fear um, at all, at least on this machine and probably likely deep into the future on this machine as to having uh, compression turned on or the MFT file taking up too much storage space and causing fragmentation in the actual file location, the template. So that's done, cancel that. So we know that this ran. Um, if we really wanted to, we could run another analyze on this thing and we'll see here we have our configuration. We don't see any fragmentation. However, if you really wanted to, you could defrag it again. See it's finished. And then you can go to the job report. You'll notice that there's no changes in everything. The overall health is good. There's no fragmentation, no related frag issues. We don't have that issue anymore with the MFT listed here. Um, so I would say at this point, we're good to uninstall this application, reboot this system, and then we'll run this test again. So to remove it, obviously, because it's Windows XP, just settings, control panel, add remove programs. Um, we'll look for disk keeper, we'll do remove, we'll do yes. Once this finishes, we'll reboot the system. When the system comes back up, we can, at that point, uh, run our test again to see how long it takes to do our reboot. So let's just do shutdown, restart, hit OK, and I'll see you guys in a few seconds. OK, guys, so we're back in. Uh, we have Corel that just launched in the background. Let's uh, set our timer up. So reboot. So there we go, we gained more performance. Again, I don't think I'm off by that much. I, I don't think I'm, I'm off by 11 or 14 seconds on authentication into this machine for the loading process. So I, I don't think that uh, there's any way that I could say that, oh, it took 10 or 15 seconds longer for me to log into the system. So I think at this point, I would say that yes, defragging Windows XP, even on a solid state hard drive, still increases your performance. Padding the MFT file still you know, increases your performance on an XP machine. Um, obviously, you're going to reduce the lifetime of the actual solid state drive if you defrag it. So it's a, you know, it's, it's, it's a catch-22 type of scenario where if you run it a lot, you're going to reduce the overall lifespan of the solid state hard drive, but you'll increase the performance of the machine on the boot. It'd be interesting to run the same test again on our Windows 10 or our Windows 11 system to see if it makes a difference there. Uh, I have a feeling that it, it probably won't because I believe Microsoft's actually changed the way the IO works in Windows 10 and 11, but it would be interesting from a, from a concept from a testing concept to see if this makes any difference in a windows 10 or 11 system but I, I as you could see it does make a difference still in a windows xp machine um and that's just the boot everything else that you're in the system doing would be, be much more snappy at this point having you know the load time i don't really have a way to double click on something and still keep this stopwatch in the you know the near focus so that way it shows speeds as far as application times and uh, access uh, at any rate, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you learned something about the defragmentation and what it actually is versus what, you know, solid state drives, I guess, have stopped the ability to run it. But it does still, or at least in XP, still proves to have a performance impact as far as running it. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this again. Uh, thanks for sticking around. You guys take it easy. Hey, so I almost forgot. Um, let's look at ONO defrag real quick. So once you have the uh, Disk Keeper uninstalled on your Windows XP machine, in order to maintain this, the best application to use is ONO defrag, but specifically the ONO defrag freeware tool from Windows 2000. And I'll put the link down in the description as to where to grab it, but specifically all it does is it gives you the ability to maintain 
what you have currently as far as a fragmentation configuration. And if you look at it, it really does look just like your original configuration tool that existed in your NT4, your Windows 2000 system. It's basically a clone of that system. So this is what you would use to continue on the maintenance of the actual fragmentation or defragmentation in a Windows XP machine after you got rid of your ONO, uh, or rather your disk keeper configuration tool. And it's really simple. You just go into it and you literally just hit the start button to start the defragmentation and it'll analyze it, then it'll defrag the files, it'll do its own compression. And this will actually also uh, work with the bootloader configuration, so you don't have to do the dash B if you don't want to through the command line. Although dash B is a lot faster than using the tools to do it, so that's your choice. Um, at any rate, hopefully uh, this helps you. And again, I'll put the links in the description, and thanks for sticking around.